firstly, I knew Cole Hannes up on the Sunshine Coast. Um, he introduced me to Rodney James. Now, Rodney James was a very well-known uh, modeler and he was a, had his own business, AR Kits, and he, um, from Grafton, he used to manufacture. Um, I was introduced to him through at a, one of the Brisbane Model Railway shows. And, then, and he, um, and, and uh, Cole said to me, um, this fellow wants to talk to you about doing HO trains. And I thought, well, I don't do HO trains. I've only ever done O gauge. But anyhow, he, we introduced me and he told me, he said he, he told me he's a manufacturer and all the rest of it and all this and that and said, um, I've been meaning for years and he said, oh, financially I can't and neither have the time to um, do any HO trains in Queensland. Are you interested? Oh, I thought, mm, not really. I know nothing. I said, oh, if it's New South Wales, I know back the front. I said, Queensland, I know nothing about it. He said, oh, he said, we'll give you all the help that you need. They said, you know, drawings, etc., and all the rest of it. Um, and I thought, well, all right. He said, look, sit down and talk to me mate. He said, you know, and he's the mate's Donnie Boyd. He said, I'll introduce you to him. And that, which I did that day. And we sat down and that, and we had a good talk all about it. And I thought, well, yeah, okay. Like the O gauge was, wasn't selling well, but back then, because, you know, um, it's very limited. Everyone was into HO. And I decided, well, rather than close the factory down, look for something else to do. And what happened is that Donnie invited me to his place. He said, if you come round my place, he said, I've got a big HO New South Wales layout and I've got a rail of um, TT track. And I said, what's TT track? He said, that's what Queensland HO runs on. Went to his place and um, we sat down, had a good talk, showed me, had a good look at his HO, that beautiful layout that he had. Um, saw the what he was talking about, Queensland. Um, he had a couple of Queensland trains there that he had made back in the 60s or 50s, late 50s. Um, explained to me that Emra used to have a layout there with um, HR and TT track, which is 12 millimetre track. Um, all the old gem track, which is ancient, oversized, all the rest of it and all that. And explained to me that Queensland HO, being narrow gauge, you know, in HO is correct for 12 millimetre track. And um, Jem was the only one who made 12 millimetre track in England. TT was a scale in, 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 the, in the UK that was reasonably popular, he, he said. That day, Donnie was just running what he had, a couple of locos and coaches running around. And he just said to me, are you interested in it? And I said, well, I have no idea. I, I've never manufactured. I, I have done HO New South Wales, but I've never manufactured anything in Queensland. And he said, well, we've got all the drawings, give you all the help. He said, and to kick it off, he said, um, I've got some of the patterns that were left over from Embra. And the patterns were for the lo steam locomotives. Um, evidently at one time there, they made a few in lead out of um, um, C-17. He, he, he said to me, he brought them on, he said, look, I've got moles for this, for baggies, for stuff like that. He said, you're quite welcome to take them and um, see whether you can use any of them. They were actually the patterns, not the moles, the, the patterns, because I made moles off them mm -hmm. and all that. Um, I got on to, um, uh, Rodney sent drawings to um, Don and, and, and Cole, and I uh, went to Cole's one day and he brought out all his old books that had Queensland drawings in them and stuff like that, and that's how it started. We went down to Xerox, copied a lot of them, and the first wagon I made was an F wagon, which is a little four-wheel wagon, just to see how it cast in, in, uh, in, in resin, um, and you know, then once I did that, I did axle boxes, which was the Amra axle boxes. Um, and then I thought, well, I need some track, you know? And I did find a, someone had a piece of in, on the, um, up in Clowndra, there's a model train club. And I asked one of the members up there if he, uh, you know, and he dropped a bit in it. Um, I then, after that, decided, well, you know, where do we get wheels from? Because you couldn't buy anything in, in TT. TT, you know, unless you're in the UK, probably. And, um, you know, I come up with the idea then of just using standard HO wheels, the same size that fitted Queensland, uh, cutting the axles down and joining them with a piece of KNS brass. So I did that in the first wagon and uh, showed it to Don and Don said, yeah, that's fine. He said, that's all good. He and said, I took them to um, a, a Brisbane show that would have been the following year after that. Um, and um, um, I was sitting there and uh, Donnie come up and and Cole were talking and I had them in my bag and I just we were all sitting down having a coffee and I, and I pulled them out you know 
And of course, on the next table was Rusty Smith. And you know, he came over and introduced himself and saw, you know, I was still and all that. And he said to me, Ron, he said, what are you going to, you going to start men? I just said, well, at the moment I'm just playing with it. And he said, well, I'm interested in it if you're going to go ahead and do it. And he said, come down to the shop. And I thought, shop, what shop? And it was his um, then partner, um, Joan, she had a toy shop at Nunda. In one corner, he had a, a um, display of HO, because Rusty was in the HO of New South Wales at the time. You know? And we had a good talk about that, and he said, I'm turning this into a train shop, into Brisbane's train shop. And that was then, about six months later, they, he got a stock, and it was called the turntable. Um, and then um, I, 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 think, I think Rusty came up. I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure, remember. But we, we met again, and Rusty just said, well, right, go ahead, start doing it. And I said to him, well, first, we got no locomotives. You know? And he said, oh, yes, we have, and he pulled one out and stuck it on it. And it was a diesel, early diesel. Just coincidence, Black Diamond, who was a, um, started manufacturing um, HO coins there. Yeah? But it wasn't on TT track. I think it was on HO track. There was a few modelers around doing that, but it's totally wrong. And it looks wrong because the wheels hang outside the locomotive. <laughs> it just was totally wrong and all that. But um, Black Diamond was then just going to do them correct in, 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 in TT because the one that Rusty had was in TT. And he said, and I said to him, well, what about track? And Rusty pulled it out. I can get as much as you want. Just then, or uh, just happened, or this was 1990, you know, uh, Shinara in Japan was making fine scale TT track, 12 mil track with points and everything, and that was it. I did the first locomotives, steam locomotives, because I, you know, selling through through Rusty, you know, I was a, um, I was one of his manufacturers and so was Black Diamond, and I wasn't going to intrude on anything he did, mm. which was fine to me. And, I, and Rusty said to me, well, we need a locomotive, steam locomotive. Mm. And that's when I said to him, I got patents for the, for the C-17. And, you know, um, and, I had to make a lot more. There was no boiler with it. There was no caps on it, and everything. And the frame wasn't right, and all that. To, you know, um, it took me a good six months. But I started to. Um, I made all the patterns for the for the early C17, and um, started casting then. And then um, after that, I did the uh, patterns for the Brown Bomber and started casting them. And the deal I had with Rusty Smith was that I did all the casting. All, all the parts, all the patterns, and all that, and he supplied the mechanism. And with the um, locomotives, were they white metal casting? Or they were all white things? metal casting. Yep. I, I did them all in wood because I only ever manufactured in, in resin and, and, and white metal. I never did etched brass. Um, what etching I did, I, I got sent out. It was mm -hmm. done in uh, Fam and Melbourne, was doing mine at the time. Um, but, you know, it was cheap. I was trying to keep the price down. Because we were starting a new thing. There was nothing. You couldn't buy anything in, in Queensland when I started. You couldn't buy a thing. Because you know, that's what Rusty said. He said, I've asked people around and no one knows. You just can't buy anything. And uh, you know, un until I came and, and, um, and Black Diamond came, it was, there was just nothing around. Mm -hmm. and, that, and we thought, well, we, we needed a locomotive to start off with. Mm -hmm. So the diesels were, 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 were going well. He couldn't make enough of them. Yep. But they wanted steam. They wanted to do. I, I did the C17 in two versions, the early versions. I did 100 of them. Um, I did 50 brown bombers, which is the later version with the American cap. Uh, after that, I did uh, PB15s. Now, the PB15s, um, I took that on myself because Rusty was in financial trouble. I did 120 PB15s. Three for six models, he financed it. And he sold them um, to Rusty who sold them through the shop. Mm -hmm. And after that, I did 30 uh, B15s. Right. Now, the actual mechanism was done, I had the mechanism made, three foot six, he, he financed it and supplied all the wheels. I supplied everything, the frame, the motor, gears, and everything. And all that was done through um, George Hadley. George Hadley. George Hadley. George did the actual frame. And he, okay. sat, he, he, he set the motor up and then, now the motor was in the tender. Yep. We, we put the motor in the tender with the frame and we used, um, we used a, um, a commercial gearbox, which is what the same gearbox I think they were using in HO in, in um, um, New South Wales. 
Yep. And we just ran it through the cab and into the. Mm. Okay. And that's how all the all the PBs were done, and the um, and the B15s were done like that. There was um, 35 different wagons in the end. By the time I mean, I only did it from 1990 to 94 or five, mm. and then Rusty took over doing them. He set up a casting shop in the back of his shop, because I um, mean 95 I think I started British. Yes. And yeah. that's why I did the British, and I couldn't do. I just said to him at the time you know, um, that I couldn't continue with mine. By then, there was other manufacturers that come into it. Yep. Uh, three foot six, he was another manufacturer. He was making some beautiful Queensland coaches and stuff like that. And Rusty said, I'll take it over and do it at the back of mine. And I showed Rusty how to do it and he set it all up and it was all done in polyurethane at the back of the shop in, um, in, in London. And he did that, just kept manufacturing right to the end, I think. Till he, till he... They were done as Ron Fox castings and and um, um, supplied through the turntable, right? Um, but uh, Rusty also supplied them ready to run. I think there was at least 50 of, the, of them, or maybe more, ready to run, done ready to run. Now, I knew the fellow who did all the um, assembly, I can't remember his name, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Lucas, I think, was his name. It was his last name. can't remember his first name. But he was, he, he was putting them together. And selling, and then you sell them to Rusty, and Rusty was selling them to the shop. I believe, if I can remember right, they sold for three hundred dollars. What was the demand like for them? Well, I guess it wouldn't stop. That's why I did so many. I can't remember. There's thirty-five different wagons, but um, you know, and I, I was the um, standard um, uh, wood coaches that ran through um, around suburban coaches around Brisbane. They were VUs. I did the coach and the brake end. And also, I was the first one to do the Sunlander cars, which was the um, blue and cream cars. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, uh, I did them. They, they were after I did the, um, the wooden coaches. But yeah, there was box wagons, there was open wagons, flat wagons. There was quite a lot of wagons. Mm -hmm. um, water wagons, yeah. gins, water gins. Things like that. I did the flat wagon, which is like, uh, I forget the name of it now, like an MTW in New South Wales, but smaller, of course. I did the flat wheel with the staunchings on it, and I did that, and I did a, a bogey open wagon. The, um, I did make um, a Queensland station kit, and I did also did a uh, I did a tunnel portal, which you'll see in there. And I think I did some car, white metal castings for signals and stuff like that. Um, um, other than that, I, there wouldn't have been any other than the 35 wagons, the three types of locomotive, um, the station kit, the tunnel kit, and white metal parts and stuff signals and stuff, signal arms and stuff. That would have been the whole lot for Queensland. Mm -hmm. As soon as I got my locos, first locos running and all the rolling stock, first thing I wondered, what, what Rusty said, he said, well, let's build a layout and put it in the shop so we can run them around. I thought, no, 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 that's not right, you know. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm gonna build a layout. So, you know, because it is fine scale and it was the first fine scale, it had to be a decent layout to show you know, what Queensland layouts in fine scale look like. Um, and I just decided I'd come up with an idea of building a, a fine scale layout for Brisbane exhibition for that year. Um, and um, it just so happened one day I was up at Georgia's and I came through Nambol and drove through Wombai and just stopped there and looked at it and it was just like it was still in the 19, 1930s, you know. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. I think that's about it. This was it. I got out of it in 94, 95. Um, you know, Rusty took over all of mine. Um, and then and then young Phil Halley with PGC took over the locomotives and um, continued from there. Uh, so virtually what I did, Black Diamond did and Rusty did. Rusty's got to have the credit because he, you know, he put a lot of time and effort in it and was certain on it. Um, we were the first back in 1990, to do it properly, like two, two scale, proper models running on the right track, 
done properly and people could actually buy it. Whereas up to then, you wanted it, you had to make it.